It's girly power. It's a coach. You're tuned in to Matt and IT on EA Sports. Coming up, running back Todd Gurley. Fresh off a standout performance a week ago, as it'll be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Green Bay Packers. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Buffalo Bills and the Green Bay Packers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Packer team as we interplay here. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bills, an early season tilt, and when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet, and both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. A couple of two-and-one teams set to square off, and we're underway here in NFL Week 4. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. They'll have the speedy Tyrod Taylor calling the shots, the former Virginia Tech Hokie. And I thought in last week's game, he found a way to win like a good pitcher without his best stuff. I mean, he did throw two interceptions. Yeah. Offset by one touchdown pass. Not the ratio, not the numbers you're really looking for as a QB. But finding a way to win, that's all that really matters. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Quickly now, here's the Buffalo offense. I love watching Todd Gurley play because I think back to when he got drafted, and so many people question taking it back that high. Well, you see exactly why. His ability to run, catch, and lead is a heck of a combination, and he leads the Rams. On second down, here's Taylor. And his throw is incomplete. Take a look at the starters here defensively for the Packers. Well, they played really well in the win last week over the Redskins. And what I saw on film was nearly an unstoppable pass rush. They had five sacks last week, plenty of hurries. So now do you just max protect on offense, keep everyone in and run, you know, one or two receiver routes to make sure your quarterback stays up? We'll soon find out. On third down, Taylor. It's brought in by Dodson. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A gain of 32 that time. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Now a play fake here on first down. He's trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Matthias Fairley, and he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. I know some teams are really about playing cover, too, because the strong safety's not usually a terrific cover guy. But in this case, he played it perfectly, read the football, and went and made the interception. First carry for Carlos Hyde. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. They still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give him the yardage that they needed, but they really want him to be that. He hit, and he lost the football. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because 
you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels. Because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. On first down, it's Gurley. Extending the arm. Oh yes, it works. The numbers on the ground for Gurley last week. There isn't a coach alive who wouldn't like those numbers. Well over 100 yards and a touchdown, too. Partner, I think all the coaches who are in that great coaching box in the sky would take those numbers. <laughs> so dead or alive. Either way, they would take they that would kind of production. And this is incomplete. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. It'll go as no gain on the play. And now they're looking at a third and goal. Now flags will come in. This one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Taylor will throw. And that is caught. Touchdown. Josh Doxson, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bills have taken the early lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, they had to the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. So quick on the spin. Oh, he's spinning, man. And he powers his way up past the 30. It was Eric Reed in on the stop. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. On second down, high. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. And this is going to be incomplete. So they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They go play action now. Taylor on the move to his left. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Daxon with a grab over the middle. 
And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Taylor now to throw on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. The 48-yard punt, seven on the return. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. First down, Bortles, incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. And a first and goal coming up here inside the 10-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to dock my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not... And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Larry Fitzgerald, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bills will add on to their lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Parkey adds the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Here's Parkey now set to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And, partner, when you run the ball on third and two, you're telling the whole world you've got nothing but confidence in your offensive line and your runner, and you expect to get it. But they were stuffed on that play, only got one yard. Great job by the defensive front, the linebackers. Everyone got involved to force a fourth down. On first and ten, it's Taylor. And this is going to be incomplete. It's dropped by his tight end, Charles Clay. And it's second down. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass and you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. It's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> Third and long, it's Taylor. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. They start the drive with high. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Okay, let's just make this one simple. We know that the running game is not their thing, but they can't just throw it on every single down without expecting some real heat from the pass rush. Now Bortles. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And it's third down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Well, the pass rush has been a real strength of late. They know how to get out to the quarterback. Absolutely. Four sacks last week. That's their first one here. Anything in particular you've seen from them or on film? I think that they're winning athletically up front, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. But also, when the offensive line wants to keep everyone in and mass protect, they know how to scheme their way back to the quarterback as well. Try and start the drive with Gurley. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Mikel Roby brings him down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Right. It's three to four yards. That's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. But they've got a third and inches coming up, trying to keep the chains moving. From the gun, it's Taylor. Flush to his right. Room here to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Taylor able to use those legs of his to pick up a first. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move was there, but didn't buy him a whole lot. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you get the defense back on its heels. It's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. They cost your team. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. Tackled by Jordan Willis. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Now on second down, this is Gurley. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. The Bills on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, that was big right there because they're in the bottom five in the league and converting that third down. They needed that pickup in a big way. There were two things they said they wanted to win in this game. One, the turnover battle, and the second, third down conversions. So they got one there. Nigel Bradham brings him down. 
Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. The Bills on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. Here it's third and two. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they move the ball with relative ease. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. What we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. On third down, Taylor. Hard throw, incomplete. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's his second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. And Parkey's kick is good. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me. I was. I was. It sounds like, sounds like you're I thinking know. the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive, you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. And let's look at Carlos Hyde now. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit, maybe featuring other people touching it for a while. And then you got a chance to come back to it when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. Well, still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. I know we just saw a nice throw and catch, but how about the big guys up front they buying that time? Game. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. I call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. 380, 380, 380. On third and long, it's Bortles. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. First target, first catch, and a first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now, the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And he locates Josh Hill, complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. And he's got it. 
It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Alan Hearns, his first touchdown on the year. And the Packers make some inroads here on that deficit. You always admire a guy who go through his progressions and find the open receiver. I believe we just saw that there. And we admire him just a little bit more when it goes for a touchdown. Extra point up and through, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's go for you, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Now Gurley staying down. Oh, let's hope he's all right. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. The Bills on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And able to find John Brown. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down. Spectacular catch turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. Here's Morris. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long that he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Taylor to his big tight end clay for the Buffalo first. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. We'll remind you once again, coming up at halftime, we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He's got stats and scores from around the NFL as we wrap up the first month of the season. No longer is he a rookie, the coach, a true veteran now. A crafty veteran. The throw by Taylor here, and that's incomplete. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Again, now it's Taylor on second and ten. Looking for his tight end play, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the ten. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. And that'll be incomplete. After that throw, and it was definitely one that he would love to have back, I wonder what's going through his head. I wonder what kind of mind game he's playing with himself to get himself back on track. Because a lot of guys, that's what they do. They have little triggers that when the mechanics are off, if they make a bad throw, that they go to that place to get themselves back in sync. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. 
Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Third down, Carlos Hyde. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call a timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow a ball finds his way back to him. But atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here on me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now Taylor on first down. Dumps it off to Gurley. And now running right through it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident, keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. To throw again is Taylor. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Nigel Bradham. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. First down, a run with Hyde. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Bills taking the lead to the locker room as we send you down to Orlando. All right, folks, eager to get back to this week four matchup. We won't put up a fight. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do really, I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. They run again with Hyde on first. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. Let's go, let's go. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit. Looking for Hearns, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. 
and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They're taking a short, steady burst. He dumps off to Morris. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Play action, now Taylor. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. A good pick up there of 20 yards. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver, and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Illegal touching, offense. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement, and then when they realize those points aren't going to count, can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? And it's caught at the seven-yard line. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. Third and goal, Taylor, and that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Josh Doxson with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Bills will extend their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit, get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, it totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On play action, it's Bortles. And going deep for Hill. This is caught inside the 15. It's a big play that time for the Packers. 61 yards. The last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know, there's a quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. 
Latay Moncrief, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Packers get a score closer. Brandon, they just got the ball, and already they're in the end zone, and you're getting ready to talk about the PAT. That was fast. Butker now to add the extra point. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. This is fielded at the chalk of the Tims. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Meanwhile, a throw by Taylor is incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead, but now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, look credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position could get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot or running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Now a stoppage here as we've got a bill shaken up on the play. We'll check on his status when we get back. On first down, it's Taylor. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Same result as last play, 14 yards and another first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again, he picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him, double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Jaron Reed busting through to get him for a loss of six. That's their first time getting to the quarterback sack number one. And, you know, they had five last week, I remember. And you have to find a way to slow down the pass rush, not necessarily with just protecting your quarterback, but to show them a lot of different looks. And they did that in the first half, you know, different angles, different things to slow down the speed. They got to him here in the second half. Now they've got to come up with a counter to that and maybe do something different. Here's Taylor, gonna throw on third and goal. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough, fourth and goal. A nice job of bringing that in, but why was he so close to the sideline there? They had all kinds of room in the flat. A little bit of a lack of coordination between him and the quarterback, because both of them should have seen that room that was available, that space, Stop your route a little bit shorter, put it on him, and let him turn and get upfield. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. 
but that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. The drive starts with Devontae Booker, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. That one good for 10 yards, and they're going to have a third down. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And the trick play doesn't work. Good reaction there defensively, and it'll be fourth down. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no game. Another carry now for Gurley. They find some open field here. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a Back now at Lambeau. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. From the gun on third down, it's Taylor. And he's got Fitzgerald. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And a quick slant gets exactly 10, and by the nose of the football, they've got a first down. Now a handoff for Gurley. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. Soft through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. with a tight end. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. A carry here for the big tight end. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. And the yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. 
This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing. Packers bring pressure, and they block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. And they will have the ball here at the three-yard line. And a blocked punt always can be such a momentum swing in a big way because now the spark has been lit. Everyone gets involved with that team. And many times coaches preach, you block a punt, you block a kick, that usually leads to victory. Meanwhile, here's a shot for the end zone right away, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action, maybe throwing it. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. That way you can try and dial up up third and goal. Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen. Touchdown, Packers! Allen Hearns with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Packers have cut it back within a score. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. <laughs> They'll throw on first down with Taylor. Over the middle here to Brown. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. And this one's incomplete. He was looking for Charles Clay as tight end. And it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. On third down, Taylor. Strong running by Clay. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they started it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough. Swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. Looking left sideline, incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown, and it's third and short. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it, when you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck, you don't have defensive backs making plays on the football, hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Here's Riley Dixon now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And Green Bay.
Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. They want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. And that one goes incomplete. They tried something out of the bag of tricks, but it's incomplete and now second down. Now Bortles to the side, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll be third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. There's a running back who was a receiver on the play. He's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And now out come the Bills. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. They've got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try to move forward. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Now it's Taylor. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roll free and brings up fourth down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And he'll take it just outside the 40. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter... Oh, no, he lost the football. Now this is picked up by the Bills, and they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. When I see a play like that... I come back to risk reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit and in this case, lose the football? Yeah, Should have gone down. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but that's the safe play. You're exactly right. Hindsight's really never wrong, is it? Because you can analyze it, but I think ultimately you got to look at it as a first option, taking care of the ball, getting what you can, and that's it. Don't worry about it anymore. Again, they run with Gurley. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to. And right now, they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score. But they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take Delay away. Game. Otherwise, Offense. this one will probably get away from them. That's going to set them back five yards. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Gurley. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. 
call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And that'll make it second down. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Here's Gurley. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Four down, four down, check. Right. Oh, Taylor going to throw. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off at the 14. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Has the scouting report changed? Are they showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirt. Yeah, he better figure, whatever the reason is, he better figure it out. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. He'll look to throw, and he's got it to Hearns. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Back to throw. And he's got a man wide open, complete. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw. This one all the way down inside the 15. 23 yards on the play. Back to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit. The stick on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves them with five more. Third and five now. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. He's back to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown. And they're an extra point away from taking the lead here in the final minute. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Butker on for the PAT. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for. And this touchdown will count. Butker now to kick this one away. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. Now Taylor, out to the left, it's complete to Dodson. Now hold everything here, we're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. Here's Taylor. 
And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. And he'll stop it with a spike here with seven seconds left on the clock. And they're not able to complete it. Now just six seconds remain. Time for one, maybe two more plays. Throwing now is Taylor. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be because from this distance, you got to prepare for everything. Hook of laterals, tip balls. And you and oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hilton. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. So for the Packers... They're on a nice early roll as they move to three and one with a win here. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Detroit Lions. Meanwhile, for Buffalo, they'll fall back to 500 at two and two. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Tennessee Titans. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.